absolute values that look like this. And remember I talked about isolating the absolute value first. We've got more going on on this side than just an absolute value. We've got these other things. And remember what I said before. Uh, I'm going to go on another page and come back just to show you. When we have something like 3x plus 7 equals 21, we have to isolate this first before we can do that last step of dividing. So we have to subtract 7 from both sides. Once this is by itself, then I can go ahead and divide, but until then I can't. And so here we're solving for the whoops, we're solving for the absolute value. So think of the absolute value like a variable. This absolute value thing, this absolute value, well let me use a different color now. I need something oh pink. There we go. This absolute value is like a variable. It has to be by itself before you can create those two expressions. So you have to isolate it using the same tools that you would as if you're solving an equation. So here we're going to add 5 to both sides. So I have 3 times the absolute value of 4w minus 1 is equal to 15. Now I can divide. This is like, you know, again, I'm trying to get this by itself. So I can divide this by 3 so that those reduce. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to have 4w, absolute value 4w is equal to 5. Now that the absolute value is by itself, now I can go ahead and write my two equations using 4w minus 1 is equal to the positive of this, which is this, and the other one, 4w minus 1, is equal to the negative of what's over here, 5. So I have my two equations. So make sure you isolate this absolute value first before you go on, right? If you try to do this first, if you distribute or something like that, you're going to run into big problems. So isolate the absolute value first. It's like solving for the absolute value. All right? So I'd like you to try number four and number nine out of your exercises. Again, stop the video. Okay, here are your answers for number four and the steps. We work each side down. We isolate. We solve each one. We put our answers in sets. And then here, again, we isolate, and getting rid of the 10, we come down and have that. So how'd you do? Pretty good, I hope. All right, one last section to this video, and we'll call it a day, and that is this extraneous solution that we talked about earlier. Remember, an, an extraneous solution is a solution that I'm going to get when I solve this expression. However, when I take the numbers that I get and put them back in for x here and here, this is not going to be equal. It's not going to be true. So let me show, what, show you what I mean. So to solve this, we have the absolute value by ourselves or by itself. So we go ahead and write our two expressions. So I can write this here as 2x plus 5 equals the positive of this, which ends up being just this. And let's go ahead and solve this. I'm going to move the x over here so it stays positive. So x here is equal to 1. So we solve that side. Then we want to go ahead and solve it the other way. So we have 2x plus 5 equals the opposite of everything over here, and that's 3x plus 4. Remember, you have to take the opposite of everything. Use those parentheses to help you not lose that negative sign. So this is 2x plus 5 is equal to negative 3x, distributing and distributing, minus 4. I'm going to go ahead and add the x over here. I get 5x is equal to negative 9. So x is equal to negative 9 fifths. Now, if I just stopped here and I said, OK, my answer is 1 oh, sorry, and negative 9 fifths, those would be algebraically, they would be correct. I did everything correctly. However, these are only solutions if, when I put them back into the original expression, it makes it true. So if I put one in for x here and one in for x here, would it make it true? And for the case of one, it actually does make it true, so one is okay. However, if I substitute in negative nine-fifths here and negative nine-fifths here, I get two different answers. They're not equal. So therefore, while this is a solution that I arrived at, it's extraneous, so what I want you to do is to mark it off like this and to write extraneous on your paper okay so this is what I want your answer to look like these are my solutions one and negative nine-fifths which I arrived at algebraically however negative nine-fifths when I substitute it back in here does not make this expression true this side does not end up being equal to this side and therefore this is a an extraneous 
solution. It's a solution arrived at, but extraneous because it doesn't make it true. Okay, so be careful of those. So go ahead and try numbers 13, number 12, and number 11. I kind of did those in reverse order. Make sure you check for extraneous solutions because every single one of these has solutions, but then some of them end up being extraneous, so make sure you substitute those in. Now, I'm not going to uh, give those corrections. You bring those to class. We'll look at those. And I'll show you how to do that on your calculator. Make sure you remind yourself. Write a little note to yourself in your notes. How can I check these extraneous solutions with my calculator? Because sometimes you get these fractions. They're kind of difficult to deal with, especially if the expression is kind of long. So I'll show you how to shorten that up by using your calculator to check for extraneous solutions.